Hey everybody, as you can see from the title above, this video is about mitochondrial disease awareness, more specifically about a little boy named Aiden, who is my godson. He is currently three years old. He was born on March 31st of 2011. Um, Aiden has mitochondrial, and a quick definition of what that is, is it's the body's powerhouse. Mitochondrial is what fuels your battery, and when your battery is low, it can't function properly. It's a genetic disorder that is commonly passed from mother to child, however, it is possible to be passed from father to child. Um, you know, mitochond I'm just going to list a quick list of the different diagnoses that Aiden has. I'm not going to give a definition of all of them because that's going to take forever because they are extremely complex. Um, you can find, however, the definitions for each of these diseases in the order I list them below in the description box, as well as a list of all of the medications that Aiden is currently on to help him fight what Amber, his mother, affectionately calls, well, not really affectionately, she hates Mido, but, um, calls for Aiden's sake, the Mito monster. So here's the list of everything um, that Aiden has been currently diagnosed with. He has neutropenia, lactic idosis, seizures, failure to thrive, poor feeding, which is not the same as picky eating, as you will read below. Um, microphilia. I don't know if I said that right, but you'll see it down there. Um, organic aciduria. In, inborn error metabolism and mitochondrial DNA depletion syndrome. Um, he has also been diagnosed with Schwaman Diamond syndrome, and he has a Mickey button. Again, you can find all of the definitions and explanations for that below because I don't want to lose a lot of time talking about Aiden and his family specifically. Um, his current medications are also listed below under his diagnoses. But a quick go over of that is he is on two different types of medication for seizures. He has an appetite stimulant, a carotene deficiency um, pill that he takes because of carotene deficiency. He has three different pills he takes a part, uh, three different types of pills that he takes for what is called like a mito cocktail. Um, each child that has mitochondrial disease has different. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. <laughs> Different specific um, struggles and, you know, like any genetic disorder, no genetic disorder is going to be exactly the same because nobody's genetic coding is exactly the same. So, you know, there's that. So he has a, three different pills that are part of his specific Mito cocktail. Um, he takes vitamin B12 shots. He gets neutropenia shots due to the neutropenia. He has vitamin C that he takes to boost his immune system. He has an emergency seizure medication, an EpiPen because he's allergic to pears, and a standing order for IV dexatrose 10% if needed for the treatment of his lactic idosis. Um, Mido is an ugly monster. It takes a child from happy-go-lucky, running around, jumping, having a great old time, to completely lethargic and sleeping within a matter of minutes. Um, it's, it's a monster. Amber calls it the Mito monster. Um, so let's kind of start at the beginning. How did Aiden's diagnosis really come about? Um, when Aiden was first born, he was pretty much diagnosed with failure to thrive almost like a week after his birth, I believe is what it was. Um, but Amber knew something else was wrong. She knew that it wasn't just failure to thrive. She knew that there was something else that was making Aiden so sick all the time. Um, and because Amber is your typical mom, um, in the sense that she knows when something is wrong with her child. Every mother does. A mother's intuition tells her when something is just not right. And Amber followed her intuition. She pushed, she shoved, and she fought for every diagnosis that Aiden has been given to help him get to where he is today. So after a lot of pushing and shoving, and after it was determined that Aiden did in fact have lactic idosis, the doctors decided that possibly he would have Mito. And that's after hundreds of doctor's visits and hundreds of appointments and 
she finally got somebody to listen to her. And what they did is they did a genetic sequencing test and um, a, let me make sure. And uh, this had to be done by um, a muscle biopsy. What they did is they cut into Aiden's thigh muscle, took out a chunk of his thigh muscle, and tested it, tested his DNA um, to see if he was missing the specific genetic coding that causes mito and that sort of thing. So after Aiden's diagnosis, you know, the doctors started working towards helping Aiden cope with mitochondrial disease. There is no cure for mitochondrial disease. There is no cure. Did we get this? There is not even really a specific treatment for mitochondrial disease because every child's struggle with mito is in fact different. Um, and not a whole lot of research is being done on mito itself to try and, you know, better the treatment for children. Mito is one of the more significant childhood killers. It kills more children than childhood cancer does. Um, you know, which is saying a lot because cancer takes a lot of kids. It takes a lot of adults. But Mito is right on up there with it. It takes more children. Simply because there is no cure and there's not really a set way to be able to treat it because not a lot is known about it. And that's what this video is all about. It's not necessarily about giving you every single specific detail and every single specific definition of what everything is. It's telling you that this disease exists and it is very much real and the children who suffer from it are very real and they are prevented from going and having fun and doing the things that a normal child should be able to do because of this disease. And if this video makes you share it with one person and raises one more person's awareness, then that's what matters to me, is to get as much awareness on this video as possible. Um, one of Aiden's first doctor's visits, you know, Amber didn't, or hospital stays, rather, Amber didn't know what was going to happen with her son. She didn't know if her son was going to live or die. She didn't know if she had a year or 20 years. She didn't know if she'd, you know, she didn't know. She didn't know what was going on at that point. So she sat down and she made a bucket list for Aiden. And the things that she, as his mother, would dream of him being able to do and accomplish. And one of the things on this particular video was the opportunity to meet Ellen and have her help spread awareness of mitochondrial disorder. Now, that was obviously added after the diagnosis of Aiden having mito, but still on his bucket list. And I'm sure that videos like this come to Ellen all the time, but I'm going to try anyway. My only request to you is that if you watch this video, you find at least five people to share it with. Don't tell me you don't know five people, because I bet you you know at least 500 people on Facebook. Trust me, I've checked. So if you promise to send this to five people, if five different people see this video, then that's 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 people who now know about mitochondrial disease that did not know about it before. Enough about spreading the word. Let's get into a little bit about what's going on with Aiden and his family right now. About a month ago, Aiden was taken from his mother. Um, was it a month ago? I don't know exactly how long ago it was, but a little while ago, Aiden and his sister Sophia were taken from their mom. The reason is that Aiden had, I believe it was a grand mall, one of his grand mall seizures while they were in Florida, and she took him to a hospital because he needed to be hospitalized after that particular episode of whatever it was that he was there for. I don't remember exactly. Um, the hospital decided that Aiden could not possibly be that sick, that Amber was crazy, and she put him on all of these medications because she was trying to kill her own son. Y'all don't know Amber, but I do, and I can assure you she would never try to kill or harm her own children. She would give her life for her children, not take theirs. Um, so anyway, uh, as a result, they did an investigation, and I put that in parentheses, because they didn't really do shit. Pardon my French. Um, they did not look at Aiden's medical records. They did not look at Aiden's genetic coding diagnosis that de 
genetically proves Aiden has mitochondrial disease. They did not look at the hospital records from all of the hospital visits he's had here in Atlanta, Georgia. They didn't bother to look at his medical history from normal doctor's visits from before he was diagnosed with mito. They didn't bother to look at anything. And so DFAC came and took Aiden and Sophia away. Not only did they take them, but they separated the two children into two separate foster homes. Um, which for children is never good. You're not supposed to separate siblings. It's a big no-no in the world. Um, so as a result, Amber does not have her children right now. She is working with the team to get her children back and to bring forth all of those medical records that do in fact prove that Aiden is sick. But the point of the matter is that somebody believes that Amber did this to her children because people don't know Mido exists. They don't know that there are children who suffer with this disease every single day. They can't get away from it. They can't be cured. They will live with this disease for the rest of their life. And chances are, this disease will be what takes their life. Yet there are people ignorant enough to believe that it's not there. And as a result, a mother is not with her desperately sick child. And they've taken Aiden off, um, I believe it's two right now, two of his um, seizure medications that are keeping Aiden from having the seizures. And a seizure, when you have a seizure, blood is cut off from your brain. And if you have too long without having blood going through your brain, it can cause significant brain damage. So because Aiden isn't on his seizure medication, he is in severe risk for having multiple seizures that aren't necessary. If he was on his medication, he would have a better chance of not having seizures. Um, but, you know, people don't really care. They don't, they're not looking at the big picture. They're looking at what they think is the right answer, even though they're wrong. They didn't do their research. So, they also tried to remove Aiden's Mickey button, and essentially what a Mickey button is, is it's what is providing Aiden with the nutrition that he needs, because he has, um, the, the poor, poor feeding, poor feeding. Because he has the poor feeding, he doesn't always get the nutrition that he needs to try and help fight and deal with the Mito. Um, and that's not good. So he has the Mickey button to get him the nutrition that he needs, and they were trying to take it out of him. Luckily, the doctor that Amber went to with this particular problem absolutely said no and that they were crazy for thinking so, and he would never make that order, and he would make sure that no doctor ever did either. And they are significantly monitoring Aiden's weight. Um, from what I understand, they're not allowing him to use the Mickey button, and they're monitoring what happens if he is on his own with feeding. Um, but right now, this video is about raising awareness on what Mido is, and that it does exist. And I just want to do a real quick message to Ellen if you ever get to watch this video, and then I'm going to follow up with um, some words from some of Amber's amazing supporters from her support site. Um, Amber has really appreciated all of your good thoughts and your prayers, and if you don't really have faith in prayer, your good vibes that you send, and your well wishes, and your, your kindness that you have shown her and her family in this extremely difficult time. So real quick, uh, Ellen, if you ever watch this, if hopefully we get enough hype on this particular video and you do get to see this, it comes across your desk. I understand that you can't do a show on every child that comes your way, but I do ask that you maybe write a letter or record a short video for Amber just to give her some hope and encouragement that there are people in higher, I'm going to say authority, even though I'm not sure that's how I want to describe it because you might get weirded, but anyway, um, there are people with higher power that are listening and that are raising awareness within their group of friends to help make sure people know about this horrific disease. Um, I'm going to leave Amber's specific um, page information below so that you can go and, you know, send her a private message or send her a little video or video chat with her or talk to her about anything. Anything that you could do to help give her some faith would be greatly appreciated to me and would help in a way get something scratched off of Boogie's, that's his nickname, Boogie, Boogie's list um, so that God forbid anything happens to him, Amber has something to look back on knowing that there are people who care about her son in this world and the struggle that he has to face. 
So without further ado, here are the well wishes, both from Aiden's mom and some of the viewers. Thank you for watching, and please remember, five people, that's all I'm asking. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.